Welcome to today's program of Grafted In. I'm Jordan Long and this is Sherry Robes and we're sitting in for Pastor Don and Donna Long while they're taking a little uh, rest break uh, for the week. Um, and we, the two of us have been teaching in Sabbath school here at Faith Christian Church for about six years now, yes. I think. Yep. So um, we just wanted to share some insights today, kind of um, take a little break from what our usual program is of Grafted In and talk about what we are teaching the children in Sabbath school. Uh, over here at Faith Christian Church. Um, so I'll start out with a scripture, Proverbs 22, verse 6, in the complete Jewish Bible says, train a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not swerve from it. And that's, that's pretty much the basis of our, our program here at Faith Christian Church as our Sabbath school. Um, all of our teachers here have the mindset of training the children have a solid foundation in the Word of God and in the Torah, and they, they too are learning their Jewish roots. Yes, and they've given them a vision of training them up as leaders and, and warriors, mm -hmm. you know, warriors of the Word, and, and, and the whole background of just having the Torah deeply rooted in them and in their hearts mm -hmm. to carry with them throughout you know, their days, throughout as they're growing up, to be the, the witnesses of Yeshua that they're meant to be. That's right. And, and we start from the youngest. I mean, we have, how old are they? Two years old so running around starting to right. quote scriptures. And they, I mean, they know. Uh, we got, the, the, our Sabbath school starts at three years old. And um, most three-year-olds can't actually sit through a, a teaching session. But our, our children very are well, very, very, very well, well behaved. Very well and that comes from uh, the parents training them as well, because you can't just come to church once a week and expect your children are going to be trained up in the ways of the Lord. You have to start at home. That's, That's where right. everything starts at. So as the parents are sitting under the solid teaching of the Word of God, they can then in turn go and teach their children it. Exactly. And it's taking that scripture and living it. Not right. just taking that scripture and reading it and talking it, but actually right. doing it. Right. Because the biggest, the biggest example the children will follow is the example that we set. Exactly. As teachers, as uh, parents, in their lives, we're the ones who will set the tone. And uh, wh whether we like it or not, they will end up imitating us. So the only way of ensuring that the children don't follow bad things is by us not having it in our lives. That's right, right. Because we know that all the children, you know, children, they're, they're little sponges. And so they absorb everything around them, whether it's for the good or for the bad. And our job is to make sure that whether we're instilling the good, the right. word of God, the, the way they're supposed to be behaving as children, growing as children, the mm -hmm. things they're learning, what they're supposed to be having come out of their mouths, mm -hmm. them speaking the word. And, and we, we tend to, we don't babysit children here. No, we, we, we start them as, as young as we can on the word. Obviously, they won't know, understand what a 12-year-old understands at three years old. But we bring the word down to a level where they do understand it. But we don't water it down to such an extent that they, they, they don't have a solid foundation. We, um, I, I'm trying to think of some of the things that um, some of our three and four year olds come out with. They talk about flesh submit and spirit man rise up. Yeah, that's and that's the biggest thing that we, we instill in our children is, is the fact that as, um, as believers, we need to always have our spirit man in the ascendancy. Um, not yielding to the nature of the world around us, not going down to that level, but bringing them all up to a higher level. Right. So they, they're ones who, even with the, the littlest ones, they don't react to the world. They act on the word. Right. So their, their instant instinct is the word. Mm -hmm. It's not the way that uh, it would be handled in the natural. They right. instantly know word, think word, and that's what comes that's out right. of them. And um, r right now, our curriculum is going through the Bible, and we started that many, many, many years, years ago, ago, and yeah. we've only made it to Proverbs. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that we have a team of, was it three? Three of two people, teachers each. Three right. Teams of three, two. Teams of te three teams of two teachers each, and we're one of the teams. Um, but each of us take, what we do is we take a scripture and find out what we, what we get out of it, what Holy Spirit shows us, our insights. And then we bring that before the children. So many times we'll have, say we're, say we're teaching on Proverbs 15. So each of our sets of teachers will teach on that Proverbs 15 because every person gets something different out of it. For so sure. um, it's, it's been an interesting journey over the past years yeah, going definitely. through it from Genesis yeah. to Proverbs and all the stuff. 
I mean, I think that we've learned more as teachers yeah, yeah, teaching definitely, it. Definitely. Um, and some of the things that the children come out with are very challenging to us. Right, because I mean, they're teaching back to us yeah. sometimes. The, some of the things they come out with, and it's like, whoa, okay, that was really good. It's like, yeah. you know, we didn't think of it that right. way. But here's, you know, they're seeing it on another level. Seeing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, and you see you see what's going on inside of them and how right. the word is working and developing right and how holy spirit's operating mm -hmm. and boom things are coming out that's right that are answers to challenges that that an adult might have right. you know so so it, it's it's such an important thing to instill this in children because as that scripture said you train up a child in the way he should go when he's old he won't depart it from it whether that's good or whether that's bad you see children in the world who are trained up to be um, disobedient, rebellious, that's how they're gonna end up as adults. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, rebellion against parents, rebellion against teachers, that, that will end up in rebellion against God. And mm -hmm. that's, the biggest, that's one of the biggest things I think we keep coming back to with the children is obedience toward their parents Definitely. and their teachers and whatever authority that God has placed in their life. That, um, because uh, the Bible talks about that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Exactly. And it's, it uses pretty strong terms um, in relation to that. Yeah, definitely. And I think a, a, lot, of, a, lot, of, um, a lot of people don't see it quite, a, quite like that. Right. They see that children grow through phases, the terrible twos, the, the teenage rebellion that years. That's, that's not supposed to happen. According right. to the Bible, if you train your children up the right way, they will stay right. Exactly. And, 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 they, and they will be... They will be a light to the people they come into contact right. with. Mm -hmm. When they're trained up in the way they should go, trained up properly, trained up in the word, and not everything is all about themselves. Right. We run into that so much with children with the whole, their you know, self-centeredness and selfishness mm -hmm. that goes on. But when you do the proper way of training them up like the Bible says, they're, they're there to be light right. to people, mm -hmm. to impact people, to, to ultimately to change somebody's life right. for mm -hmm. eternity. Mm -hmm. And the, the culture that we live in today is so much a me-centered society exactly. where they're t training children that I want, I want, give me, give me. And that's not preparing them to be successful in the world mm -hmm. that we're living in today. Um, we, look at, we look at across the globe, radical Islam is teaching their children to be suicide bombers at five years old. They're training their children uh, with guns at five years old. Our children are sitting on the couch watching video games mm -hmm. at five years old. Right. Uh, so there's, there's a lack of balance in that. And why should the kingdom of darkness have more knowledge than the kingdom of light? Why should their children be more disciplined than our children? So I, I, our, our purpose really is training up these children as mighty warriors in these end times who will be able to be the ones with the answer going out there. I mean, it doesn't matter what your natural age is, your spirit man is eternal. That's right. So it doesn't matter if you were born again, and you're five years old and you're just born again, or if you're 50 years old and you were just born again, your spirit man's the same age. Um, and children can catch things on a level that their natural minds may not understand, but it gets down deep inside them, and when it matters, they'll live it out. Exactly. So, so, so much of what we teach is putting out concepts in front of the children that may be above their heads, but we know that they're listening to it. Right. And so they'll, they'll, they'll encounter situations where they'll apply it in their life. Exactly. So they apply a concept they may not be able to say, what it is in words that you would understand, but they live it out. Right, and everything, every, all that word that we're putting into them is that seed, and mm -hmm. it's growing inside of them. And they're speaking this stuff out, but there's also a level of boldness in them too. Right. Because children aren't as apt to, as an adult, to be like, oh, you know, shy away or be not as confident to speak something. Whereas a little child, they just have a complete innocence about themselves, a mm -hmm. complete... Um, confidence within themselves and and they're bold and confident in speaking out what they need to speak out at that time that's right and and because they know the word so solidly they're even even able to answer people you know if somebody comes in and says I'm sick 
our children know, yeah, they'll, they'll say to them, by, by Yeshua stripes, you're healed. Exactly. And, and that's how they're, they do respond to situations. Yeah. So if any of them falls and, and scrapes their knee, they're, cry, they're sitting there crying. An We've taught them, yeah. and, they, and even from three years old, exactly. they've started to be able to, to catch themselves and say, in the name of Yeshua, I'm healed. Yeah. So that's, that is a really good, solid foundation for them to have. It's so much easier to build it when they're young than to, as adults, try to retrain their thinking. It, it, you know, so much, so much of what adults have to deal with, it would, be, it would be a lot easier if, as children, they had been taught these things. Exactly, yeah. And even with the children now, I mean, they speak at a level higher than their natural yes. age. So you have a, a, a five-year-old who, you know, something happens, like you said, with a mm -hmm. healing thing. And that five-year-old comes out with a wisdom mm -hmm. that is higher than that what their natural mm -hmm. age is at. That's and right. that's all the process of what has been being ingrained in them right. through these years of being saturated with the word, teaching them different things that the Bible says. Right. And, and, and so I'm thinking of some of our children, even at five years old, you know, they have a, they have a moment where they're they they're acting out there, which is rare. They yeah, rarely do. Yeah. Um, but one of those rare moments when they're acting out and you go and you ask them, what's the matter? And they their answer is, I'm in my flesh. Exactly. Now, how many children do you do you hear answer like that? Right. I'm in my flesh. They know they're in their flesh. Right. And he said, I'm in my flesh and I'm not helping the cause. Those are pretty high Those words for a five-year-old. Yeah, and that expresses a concept that if we could only catch as adults, exactly. we'd be so much better off. Exactly. Um, yeah. th but training them that it's not, it's, not just what you, it's not just a matter of what you do when people are watching. It's a matter of what you do when nobody's around. What are you doing at home? What are you doing, at home? What are you doing in your private life? Right. What are you doing when it's just... Because really, you're never alone because Abba's always with you. Um, what are you doing when it's the only one watching is Abba. The, do you, are you a person of integrity? And that's exactly. one of, that, I think that's one of the biggest things we've been coming back to is integrity. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. The integrity and, and the obedience and the mm -hmm. discipline and, and um, integrity of your words, mm -hmm. you know, that's where the integrity part comes in, living yeah. out a life of integrity and integrity of, of your words. Right. Because what you're speaking, you know, you need to be believing what you're speaking right. and there needs to be integrity that's backing up what you're speaking. Right. Because you look all throughout the word, all, all throughout the Torah, and you see many, many times when, when God says about um, not lying, and, yeah, and, right. and he takes it a very serious thing. So because of that, that's how we treat lying. And there's rarely an occasion oh, when one of the children not, yeah. have lied. Um, but things like that are taken very seriously, but not in a way to come down on the children. It's right. a way to teach them that... You know, you say one thing, you, you, you lie about something, then your word can't be trusted. So when you turn around and you try to speak to the devil to tell him to get out of your life, then he's not going to listen to you because your word doesn't hold up any weight. Right. And, and I, I think over the years that's been one of the biggest things that we've, like, stressed with the children. And as a result, they've all grown up in an awareness of integrity to their words so that they, their every word does count. So when, when they look at you and they say something, you don't have to question whether they're lying to you or not. Yeah, they're telling you the truth, right. they know it. Definitely, yeah. And, and, they, and they have that, you know they have that understanding mm -hmm. and they know, you know, and it's like, I know, you know, there was an example of one of our little ones, you know, with the whole thing of training them up the way should they, they should go and, and, and the integrity and the, the discipline and the behavior part mm -hmm. aspect of it. You know, um, one of our little ones being in a supermarket one day and seeing another child her age acting out because this child was upset that the mother wasn't going to buy her mm -hmm. something. So she was acting all out and, and throwing a tantrum in the store, which is, you know, not a good thing. Right. And it, it's, That's a common you know, sight. Exactly. It is a very common sight. And our little one turned to her mother and said, we don't behave like that. Right. That's not proper behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. even at that age, recognizing it. Mm -hmm. and knowing right and 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 so in, if you if you instill that in the children that even when they see something that's wrong this isn't something we do then that will be what comes back to them when they're out there on their own and they're in a situation when they they're faced with a choice between right and wrong if that's instilled in them 
that will be the choice that will be the overruling thing right. in That's their life. That they'll they'll choose the right over wrong mm -hmm. because they know this is the way we do it. This isn't this is the right way. Right. And if they're ever in a situation where something happens and they're the ones who offer the um, the right word for it, whereas the situation's going on and people around them may be reacting in fear and stuff. Mm -hmm. and then, our little one is the one that's bringing the peace into the situation right. and bringing in the the right word the the mm -hmm. the word of god to show to bring the the peace to the people right. to change that situation right and 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 um i think it's in the proverbs that it, it talks about how um when when you when you are in the way of life when you are on the right path, when you're in the way of life, not only are you in that way, but you're a way of life to others. Mm -hmm. And that's what, one of the things that we've been teaching the children is, is, is that their actions don't just affect them. It's not just about them. Th everything they do impacts those around them. Every decision they make, every word they speak, it impacts people around them. So they stop and think before they act. They think before they speak. Right. And, and, um, I mean, that's something that we, we are working on in yeah, our own lives. Yeah. Stop and think before you act. Think before you do something. But think about the impact this will have on someone else. Exactly. So it's teaching them about not being so self-centered again. Exactly. It's, They're aware of it's not all about them. Right. It, it's, about, it's about people. Right. You know? And being a light. Exactly. And, 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 I mean, we, in recent weeks on this broadcast, we've talked about the blood moons and talked about um, the signs of the times that we're living in and how, how the time is short. Yeshua is coming soon. Um, this thing is going to close up pretty soon. So if we only have a short time on this earth, we need to be living like it. Exactly. We need to be doing whatever necessary. We can't be just walking around as if nothing is nothing is happening around us right. when the whole world out there is crying out for someone exactly. to help them and the biggest thing is is we're the ones with the answers so how selfish are we if That's we right. don't if we don't give the answer if that we have it here and not right if we're hiding it. our light right right and, and and with our children they're being raised up as warriors mm -hmm. you know just mighty warriors and, it, and it's been interesting just seeing the whole process the journey that yeah. has gone on with them you know from our children that range to you know like even with the, the ones that aren't in sabbath school the two-year-olds right. up to the ones that are out of sabbath school right but some of our ones that we do have in there the older children We've right. seen how they have grown through the oh, years yeah. and how they've matured. They've, they've surpassed they've most adults. Most adults. We Definitely. have uh, we have two of our children who are preparing for a bar and bat mitzvah, yeah. and at some point we'll have them come on to the broadcast and share with you what they're learning and stuff. But it's amazing. You talk with them, yes. and it's like you're talking with an adult who has been definitely. through seminary, yeah. even yeah, more yeah, so. Definitely. I yeah. mean, they can teach you things and and come out with concepts that are so high yeah. and it's that just it's, like, it's wow. just you just sit back and you're like in awe of it, it. Is, and, it and you definitely. say god this is this is your end time army this is this is who you've birthed into this realm for such a time as exactly. this exactly. and and because of it, people have looked at us before and said you guys are so hard on your children but we do it in love exactly. everything we do is in love and even in the teaching it's it's so they're they're um saved from so much trouble that they'd have to face if they right. if we didn't train them up that way right but not just that i mean we have the happiest most well-behaved joy-filled right. mm -hmm. fun loving children you mm -hmm. know that that we're just so blessed right. to have in our lives right. and to be teachers to them. And it's because they have boundaries around their life. Exactly. Uh, children are the least happy when they're let just do their, do own, oh, their do. own thing. Because children need structure. They need boundaries. They need security. There's a sense of security in it. There's and and there's a sense of love. I mean, if, if, if the parent's letting the child run the house, the child's very insecure. They're very, they don't know who's in charge. They don't know who's protecting them, who's looking right. out for them. It's a chaotic. It's chaos. Yeah. And, and it's, that's when children act out because they don't know how to express that. They don't know how to put words to that. But that's when they act out because they don't have that structure around. And I, I know I grew up with, with this structure around, thank God. Uh, it saved me from a lot of things that I would have had to face in, in my older 
in the teenage years and everything. But because I had that structure around me, because I had at seemingly sometimes it was very strict discipline, but I, I look back on that now and I'm so thankful for it. And, and our, even watching our children come up and, and again, how joyful they are, how, how, how just happy they are. They enjoy so life. They, they do. They're, they not, do. they're not in any way restricted. It's, it's the freedom within the boundaries. Yeah. You know, it's just like when, when Abba says things in his Torah. It's meant for our benefit, not for our hurt. Um, when he tells us not, uh, take the Ten Commandments, for example, when he tells us not to lie, not to steal, not to, not to um, take something that doesn't belong to you, right. it's not because he wants to keep us from having fun. It's because exactly. he wants to save us from something that will hurt us exactly. in the end and hurt exactly. others. And um, it, that, that just living your life according to the Torah, according to God's word, within the boundaries that he set in his word, makes for such a happier life it does it does definitely and, and, and it's just it's so evident in the in the children mm -hmm. you know and and that, like i said that boldness and that confidence they have mm -hmm. you know we've taken some of them with us to places mm -hmm. and and have seen how they've um you know witnessed to mm -hmm. people and impacted the people and even with them um just going up to somebody and giving them a hug mm -hmm. you know and and that person that they're hugging n knows it's a genuine hug. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a, a hug that's because mommy told me to do it. Had to do yeah. it. You know, you have this little child that just because of who they are, they just radiate love. Exactly. And they just, they give that out of people. They just want mm -hmm. to give it to people and they just on their own goes up that's to right. somebody and just embrace them. And we have seen time after time again, what that has done to right. people who have mm -hmm. received those hugs. Children naturally just, they just naturally have an openness. They don't have they any do. walls. They don't have Definitely. any any hindrances. And if you, if you teach them not to be focused on themselves and to be focused on others, it just naturally flows out of them. And they can yeah. get places where adults can't exactly. get. They can get exactly. into people's hearts where adults exactly. can't get. Right. And who knows, but that might be the very thing that leads someone to Yeshua. Exactly. And yeah. that's the ultimate thing, Definitely. is we're training the children. Everything you do is a witness for him, for him or against him. If you're, if you're on the path where you need to be, walking where you need to be, then you're being a witness for him in everything you do, everything that you say. But if you're not, then you're on the enemy side. And the children know that. They, exactly. they, they know it. They say it themselves. Definitely, yeah. And, and it's, you know, they have that ability, like you said, to get into somewhere where us adults may not be able to, where, it, you know, where it's common for an adult to put up a wall with another adult. Right. But, you know, it's a very rare thing for an adult to put up a wall with a, ch a child. Yeah. You know, there's no walls a lot yeah. of times when it comes to a child. Yeah. And when there's no walls, you're open. Oh, yeah. You're open. You're, you're in a sense, you have a vulner vulnerability mm -hmm. where this child has that opportunity to just impart and impact right. the love of Yeshua. Right, exactly. And and how, how many people have been changed by the love of a child exactly. who is yeah. who is really communicating the love of God right. and um, it, it, that's something that we've been on lately is talking about love, love and walking yes. in love and I mean children have their things with each other every even ours right. every now yeah, and then they yeah. you know that's they get into little spats with each other right. and yeah. you know they but they get they move beyond it, it yeah. but but the biggest thing we're teaching them is in in not reacting in the flesh right. is to not let yourself get upset with something and take out anger on someone right, exactly. to not get angry with somebody to be forgiving and loving and yeah. and just let things go yeah and, and just just to live a life of, of love you yeah. know because they're so good at radiating it you oh, know yeah. they have nothing that would hinder them or right. hold them back whereas adults it's more us that puts it on exactly them, yeah know? and that's why it's so important as us as, our, as their teachers right to make sure we're portraying yeah. in that correct image in front of and them. I think, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we've been working on yeah. lately, especially, is making sure that everything that we do as teachers is in love, in love with each other, that Definitely. they never, they never see us arguing with each other, because right. that will put that example in front of them. Yeah. They never see us at odds with each other, yeah. but when they see us, they see us as one. Exactly. And, and that's a, ultimately a picture of how the church is supposed to be, how the body of Yeshua is supposed to be 
acting as one in everything that we do. We're not one in doctrine. It says we're one in faith. Yeah, it's that picture of unity. Right. A picture of, of, of family, of a family right. unity. Yeah. And, and the children growing up in that and in turn. And flourishing. Exactly. And mm -hmm. them doing that within themselves. Right. You know, the unity with each other. Right. You know. So it's never, it's never too young to start training yeah. a child up. It's never too from young. The womb, from the exactly. Womb. And, 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 and to start speaking over that child, even when they're exactly. in the womb, to yep. speak the word over them, because they can hear you. They yeah. have, that's one of the first senses Definitely. that is developed, yep. is the hearing. And um, to be playing um, music, yeah. playing word yeah, over them. And, word, and that goes for either way, because yeah. people who play um, the hard, heavy metal rock, that that's what that's, that's what that impacts that baby in the womb. Yeah. That's what sets the course for their life. Yeah. And those sounds are sounds of rebellion. They're sounds of discord and disharmony. Absolutely. So children who grow up in that type of atmosphere are more likely to go down the wrong path exactly. and to go off into things that they shouldn't be going right. off into. Right. Whereas if you start from start from start from the womb, exactly speaking word, playing word, playing. Um, word music right. over them that's yes, that's definitely. speaking that over them it, then they end up like was it in Isaiah that says our children are disciples, disciples taught, taught of the Lord, Lord and obedient to his will and great is their peace and undisturbed composure exactly. and we're seeing that lived out in front of exactly. us and our children our yeah. children are disciples and they are they have open hearts they're just like she said in the beginning they're like little sponges yeah. that just absorb what you give them even when they don't understand it all, they actually, uh, they absorb what you give them. Right. And many of our children that we have now, this all took place with them when they were in the womb. Exactly. You know, the mm -hmm. mother created an atmosphere of holiness. That's you right. know, it, just an atmosphere of holiness and... Shalom. Exactly. Wholeness. Exactly. Nothing missing, nothing exactly. broken. Yeah. And, 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 and by doing that, by giving that structure in their lives, by giving them that solid foundation of the word, we, we're setting them up for success Definitely. in the future, success in these end times where they are walking shalom, where they are walking love, right. that that is who they are, that is a part of their being, and they're solid. They're not going to be shaken by what's going on moved. in the world. They they're not going to be moved no matter what um, the enemy th may throw at their path. They're going to be the lights in this dark world. Exactly. And, and that's, that, I, that is the biggest thing through the past years that we've been stressing with them yeah. a lot. And um, it's, been, it's been an exciting it has, journey. It's, it's really, it's really journey. awesome to watch their growth in, in, in yeah. through the years as they're growing up in the things of the Lord right. and to yeah. look to the future and say, this is, this is where they're headed. They're, they're, for they're destined for greatness destined for and greatness. they're destined to be the light of the world. So, well, I think that wrap about wraps up our yes, program for today. Um, we enjoyed this time with you, and hopefully we will see you next week as we talk more about our Jewish roots.